and the new world is here to stay, which is gender equality. It's about culture diversity and the strength that that built to any organization. Welcome to the Shipping Podcast, where I meet interesting maritime professionals sharing their passion for the shipping industry and their everyday job. I am your host. My name is Lena Gosberg. Hello, Shipping Podcast lovers. Welcome to the 120th episode of the Shipping Podcast, where you will be listening to Patrick Dahlgren, Senior Vice President, Global Marine Operations at Royal Caribbean Cruises. It took me 120 interviews to reach to this. I think this is what I've been looking for. Someone who shares my values of how the future for the maritime industry shall look like and who has the position and the courage to take a stand on the things that needs to be looked at right now. Without further ado, I give you Patrick Dahlgren, a true leader. Welcome to the Shipping Podcast. Could you please introduce yourself? My name is Patrick Dahlgren. I am uh, the uh, Senior Vice President for Global Marine Operations for Royal Caribbean Cruises old brand, including Celebrity Cruises. And what is your background? I am a sea captain. I used to be a captain on board uh, Royal Caribbean uh, ships. Latest command was the Oasis of the Seas, which is one of the larger or largest cruise ship in the world with uh, two and a half thousand crew and six and a half thousand guests. And how did you come in contact with shipping from the beginning? A very keen interest from a very young age uh, growing up in, in Sweden, who's traditionally been a very big shipping country and uh, studying maritime at uh, Kalmar uh, University to uh, get my master in nautical science and then very keen interest to see the world. I'm so happy I finally catched you in Stockholm this time <laughs> because this is not where you're based. No, I'm based in Miami. I've been uh, away for almost 20 years now. I still try once or twice a year to get back to Stockholm or to Sweden in general. But yeah, it was very, very fortunate to see you. What is your responsibility today? How did you come into the position where you are now? Yeah, it's quite interesting, actually. You know, uh, as a as a mariner, uh, you belong at sea, so to speak, right? But uh, with a large organization like ours, we have close to 80,000 employees worldwide. It's a very fast-growing industry, the cruise segment. And um, I had opportunity, like I said, over uh, many years to work on board ships, being a captain on board these large cruise lines. But then after that, being offered to go shoreside and to work first as a director for New Build and run the New Building program on the maritime side. And then moved on from there to be now actually the senior vice president for the Global Marine, a consolidated marine organizations for all uh, six uh, Royal Caribbean Cruises brands, which is uh, Royal Caribbean International, Celebrity Cruises, TUI Cruises, Asamara Club Cruises, Pullman Tour Cruises and Silver Sea Cruises. So I have met the expert of cruises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not that used to cruises in Sweden. We are more used to ferries. That is true. And also a, a lot of that is based on seasonal uh, weather here. Obviously being very cold winter is not as, as interesting for, for the cruises to go up here. But in the summertime, it's a very, very big shipping hub. Port of Stockholm have close to 300 calls every single year. It's one of the highest rated ports in uh, Europe, actually. So it's a very, very popular place. And of course, being the hometown, it's uh, it's uh, I love this uh, city. So, Of course, of course. So what are the biggest changes that you have seen in shipping in your years? It's a significant generation shift, um, I think, both from on board and shore side gone or partly gone are the days where the stick versus the carrot is used as an onboard leadership pre prerequisite. Now, uh, in order to uh, be successful and, and survive in the industry, the leaders have to really adapt to the modern way uh, in order to retain and attract the right talent, particularly on the larger, more complicated cruise ships. There is a really big need for leaders that listens, leaders who 
really are just creates the prerequisite for others to do the right job. So what is a good leader in your view? In my view, a lot comes back to one of my mentors, uh, Jan Carlson, who used to be the CEO of um, uh, Scandinavian Airlines for many years. One of his, uh, his saying is, be selfless and serve your people. Always look for the better good for the organization you work for and the people the people. It's all about the people. And as a leader, you are there to serve and to create the right prerequisite for your team to flourish. Do you have a leadership program within your organization? Yeah, we do actually. And both for uh, shipboard and shoreside employees, we have a very good good program. So we take them uh, with one of the best actually leadership universities or universities in, in North Carolina. It's been very successful to date and uh, a lot is about educating the people to have more of the servant leadership approach and creating that atmosphere where you can truly get the entrepreneurial leadership and entrepreneurial way of thinking so that when people come to work every day, they are motivated, they wake up in the morning and they want to innovate, they want to improve, they want to listen to others and more importantly, are very open for the new world And the new world is here to stay, which is gender equality. It's about culture diversity and the strength that that built to any organization. Any organization who are to survive in the future, this is my firm belief at least, is that you will be extinct as a company unless you shift. And it's not about just doing the right thing. It's about business. And in order to survive as a business, you really need to look at gender equality. You need to make sure you are open to cultures and you need to be able to have a system in place on board ships and in the shore side organization where everybody get listened to and have a very selfless way of leading your people. So I'm especially happy to see you because you also, you are the boss of Captain Kate. <laughs> <laughs> and Captain Kate is one of our female role models nowadays, I think. And I understand that you have a gender equality program in place. Very much so. So when I actually came shoreside and had the fortunate to work together with uh, the CEO of uh, Celebrity Cruises, Lisa Lut of Perlo, which is one of my mentors who have really helped me throughout the years and been an, been an inspiration in a lot of way of thinking uh, in terms of leadership and looking at what we did together. And when we started in Celebrity Cruises, which was one of my first shoreside roles was just for that brand before I moved to to do the, the Global Marine Organization, to be able to, first of all, get Captain Kate on to becoming a captain after many years as a very qualified staff captain. I had the fortunate opportunity to actually work with her when I was captain in the Royal brand as well. And she is a wonderful person. She is a true professional mariner and one of the biggest, if not the biggest, inspiration for women at sea. She's very also good at utilizing the media. So utilizing, for example, Captain Kate's uh, Instagram posts and uh, even her cat for that matter. Her cat probably have more posts than most shipping companies in the world today. So uh, I think herself has about 70,000 followers. Her cat have 20,000. So uh, it is a, a very good way to educate the world about women at sea, educate young women to choose the best profession in the world, which I truly still believe, having spent most of my careers on ships, it is the best job in the world out there at sea. And to inspire more women to go to college and go to maritime academies and get out there. We we certainly need lots of people. We're hiring uh, lots of uh, female officers and cadets on our ships. We moved from around 5% females on the bridges on the Celebrity Cruises brand to over 20% in just about a year. So that journey uh, was absolutely amazing. So how did you, where did you find them? We partnered with a lot of the universities and surprisingly enough, there was a lot of really qualified females out there. They were just not getting promoted and to really 
put the foot down, so to speak, and move on, do the right thing, promoting the women that needs to be promoted, that should be promoted. And the success have been just wonderful. And also as an industry, we're growing so fast. As a company, we're hiring close to 15,000 people a year on average now in the coming years. So the growth for the cruise industry is just enormous. And looking at the worldwide view from a sailor's perspective, there's over 2 million seafarers worldwide. There's only 2% that is female. And for us to then be up to over 20% has just been wonderful. So what are the changes you see then when you have the female officers? We see quite a big change actually on board ships because if you think about it, just, you know, not only doing the right thing, but you see the changes in the men on board as well, how they behave, how they have better behaviors, and also the recent trends overall in the maritime sectors too is the more transformational leadership way of thinking and emphasis on empowerment and collaboration. That's more of a trait associated with women. So it's kind of what you see uh, best suitable anyway. And also generally... Women are more self-critical uh, on their ability, which is very good, versus men who are more overinflated generally view of themselves and their ability to do things. So it really have helped a lot in terms of questioning status quo, uh, both from a safety side and but also from again continuous improvement is very big for us as a company. But being able to question the way we do things and come up with new ideas and new ways of doing things. We're very big on traditions, of course, and it's great with tradition in the maritime sector, but to be able to question status quo is a huge success factor. And I think it's critical in order to survive in the future. I think I can retire now as a podcaster because you are saying what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, but I think for us also, I mean, if, if I were to add further things to this, it's also about uh, finding new countries. So it's not just the traditional maritime countries that we were looking at, you know, because I think we're all familiar with, you know, you have Northern Europe, Southern Europe, you have United States and you have Asia. Asia traditionally very large in maritime. And of course, we're still focusing on hiring from all of the good places around the world. But I were very fortunate to come across World Maritime University, which is uh, IMO's or UN's university in Malmö, Sweden. And we have a very good collaboration and their leader, the president, Dr. Cleopatra, is absolutely wonderful. And coming across with her and also building the sustainability goal number five, which I was fortunate enough to write together with Dr. Momoko from Japan. And through that, I got in contact with Regional Maritime University and more importantly, one of their students who is double master degree student, both from WMU and from Regional Maritime University in Ghana in Africa and West Africa, uh, Nicoline. And coming across with her, seeing her qualifications, seeing all the skill set, the personality trait, yeah, she's just a wonderful, wonderful person and a, a mariner. She could not get a job. She could not get any cadetships anywhere. She could not fulfill her sea times because no one simply would hire her. And there was challenges also with Ghana being recognized in European Union and things like this. So we work very closely with Malta, got that approved, hired her. And now we're hiring two to three females from Regional Maritime University in Ghana and Africa to Celebrity Cruises brand. And it's just been so successful, really, really good women. And it also creates, of course, a big bus for other women in Africa and especially in that portion of Africa to go to see. There's not many jobs in the region normally. So it's really, it's helping a lot of people at the same time. Mm. How do you see the future for shipping in general? I think there is a huge challenge in terms of, since the growth is so large, and ultimately, in terms of shipping, you have over 90% of all transportation goes through ships. And cruising is growing so fast. This year, we're going to be up to 30 million people cruising. It's just a wonderful place to have your vacation. You see lots of places. The entertainment on board is beautiful. Gone are the days of the old ocean liners and, and that style of, of cruising. So the growth is huge. challenge we have is, again, to get enough talents, get enough experienced talents, and 
looking at the, the gap between demand and supply, today we're sitting at almost 5%. Uh, in terms of a gap between demand and supply. And it's estimated that 2021 is going to be close to 20% gap between supply and demand of officers. And among many of those officers, they don't want to go to sea. They want to do something else after they uh, have their exam anyway. So it's a huge, huge challenge ahead of us. And in that sense, if not just about gender equality, but it's about doing the right thing for the business also. Why would you ignore 50% of the population? That just makes absolutely no sense. But also we have a sustainability challenge ahead of us. We do have. And of course, part of the UN sustainability goal is the gender equality on number five. But for us as a company, we're also very, very focused on driving innovation, uh, trying to find solutions working together with the best universities in the world, the best other shipping companies in the world that are disruptive in, in a good way, in the way of innovation, digital technology, and trying to find new ways to be more and more sustainable in everything that we do. The core of our business is continuous improvement and will continue to be so. And really trying to solve this uh, this sustainability uh, targets coming up. So it is crucial for the world and it's crucial for the industry. So maybe I shouldn't put this question to you because you already are doing your best, but how could the industry, the shipping industry, become more visible to the general public? I think we are way too old-fashioned. I think what we did with particularly Captain Kate, but also overall with social media, have helped us a lot. But I think we can do way more. We can use social media way more. We can use modern ways like podcasts and making sure that people like yourself, Lena, is more spread across the world, more of you across the world that speaks the the language that we all speak and, and and talk about the industry it's such an amazing industry and it's an industry i have passion for whether it is cruise or whether it's shipping in general but there is so much we can do and it's such a crucial part of, of the world the world trade will stop without shipping so we are here to stay uh, but our voice needs to be heard and it needs to be heard in terms of innovation it's mostly our own fault. I would say almost solely our own fault. Shipping companies are very stale. They work in silos. Most shipping companies work in silos individually themselves. Even the best company seems to work in silos. They don't talk to each other between departments. They don't really innovate to elevate in a collaborative way. We need to work better together. We have IMO, which is a wonderful organization. And I think there we also have an opportunity to really elevate that. I was recently, and one of the uh, larger reasons I'm here in, in Europe now is for a Global Industry Alliance, which is an IMO portion, which I was invited to be one of the, the, the advisors to. And it's a really great organization and we have some really great opportunity moving forward, both on gender and sustainability through IMO. Did you have a role model growing up? I think we all have our mothers and fathers as role model uh, and very much so for me as well. Uh, very different personalities, both of them, which is wonderful. And I think that's where my my way of thinking came quite early, that you need diversity and being different in order to be successful. If everybody would be the same, the world would be a terrible place. So people need to be different. People need to uh, think different. And we need to all share ideas and experiences with each other. So very much my, my mother and father. Then at, at later years, Jan Carlson, the, the CEO, as I mentioned, of SIS, was a big role model for me. And then uh, the people I work with at sea, very much so. Certain people you see and you learn from, and some of them you learn from in terms of, I will never do that in the future when I become a leader, which is maybe more common than not in shipping. But um, you learn from lots of people. And I think that's it should never come down to just one person. There is a, a lifelong way of learning. The day you stop learning or are open to learning and open to change, that's way the day you stop living, I think. Do you consider yourself being a role model today? I hope I am to a certain extent. And uh, I have helped a lot of people through my career, and especially as of late. 
And it's really great to be able to share your experiences and ideas with them and being able to help people in their career. People is my passion and I'm very much wanting to see myself as a good listener and someone who uses the two ears versus the one mouth more than anyone. But uh, I really do try. And I think everyone needs to remind themselves continuously that our job is to help others. Our main job is to be selfless and to think of others around you and the organization as a whole. What is uh, the enterprise mindset and the people mindset? So I, I love people. I love working with people. I love helping people. And uh, that's kind of what I work for. Who would you be interested in listening to? Who do you think I should meet the next in the shipping podcast? I think there is many individuals, both this side of the pond in Europe and in the United States. I would say uh, this side of the pond, I think in Sweden in particular, you have Jonas Kleberg, which is the head of the Valenius organization, who is an amazing and inspirational person, I think, in shipping in terms of being disruptive, again, in a good way. He calls things out as it is. And I think that's necessary because anyone who does, in the next few years will reap the benefit because the world is changing and the world is changing fast and it's here to stay. So gone are the old ways and uh, I'm looking forward to see the success of those people who do the right thing. Thank you, Patrick, for taking the time to speak to me. When I finally traced you down <laughs> to Stockholm. No, it's a it's a great pleasure, Lena, and it's really interesting because I've I've uh, seen and listened to your podcasts, and uh, they always come up on the Google feed. So it's really uh, uh, great what you do. It's great what you do for shipping. It's great what you do uh, traveling around, listening to people, listening to people in the industry, and getting the world uh, the word of shipping out there. It's very important, and uh, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick, especially for your kind words at the end of our chat. It gives me great pleasure to hear you say those things that I believe in so much that I have dedicated four years of my life to make other people see. I would like to share something else around this interview, how it all came about. I met with Captain Kate at the World Maritime University in Malmö, early April. As you all know, who has listened to episode 114. And she told me that she was going to do the presentation on the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line's gender diversity program since her colleague and boss, Patrick Dahlgren, had to leave and couldn't do the presentation. When looking at the program, I realized that the name Patrick Dahlgren sounded Swedish to me. So I asked Captain Kate if he is a Swede, which she could confirm. And then I sort of forgot about it because trying to get hold of someone called Patrick Dahlgren isn't that easy. And it's not easy to come in contact with the with the management of Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, either if you don't have their contact details. But come spring and early summer, and I attended a maritime gathering in the south of Sweden, where I met an old friend who used to work in the cruise industry with new buildings. And I asked him, do you know Patrick Dahlgren? Yes, of course, he said. I will put you in contact with him. I think he's on his way to Sweden right now, actually. It took less than a week, and then I had an email from Patrick, where he said that he had been asked to get in contact with me, and maybe we could meet since he was currently in Gothenburg, where I live. Do you think I almost fell off my chair? Yes. And then I started to kick myself, because... I was in London. Lucky for me, Patrick said that he would be in Stockholm for a few days. So when I came home, I decided to catch a train and go to Stockholm to see him. That is a three-hour train journey. Patrick probably wondered who that woman was who had been started to stalk him, a total stranger 
who is so eager to meet with him that she just jumps on a train and goes to Stockholm. But when we finally met, we shared a morning coffee and started to speak for a very long time. So long that I almost forgot to press play on my podcast recorder. I felt like we had known each other for a very long time. So, once again, Patrick, thank you for not declining this woman her wish to sit down and have a chat with you. The reason for my visit to London, when I was missing out on Patrick's visit to Gothenburg, was that I had been invited to the IMO to do some interviews. The following four interviews are with people that works for this UN body. And I am convinced that after having listened to them, you will know more about the structure of that organization and the change management project that is being done there. So, until the next time, from me to you, over and out. Thank you for listening to The Shipping Podcast. Don't forget to tell everyone that you meet that there is a shipping podcast available and that they should download it and listen to the maritime professionals who are sharing their passion for the shipping industry. 